I greet everyone that the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the word of the Lord is going to be read tonight. I would like to invite those that can to stand up. We're going to open up our Bibles uh, in the book of the prophet Haggai in the Old Testament. We're going to read. Haggai 1 verse 13 and Haggai 2 verse 19 chapter 1 verse 13 and verse chapter 2 verse 19 Amen. The Bible says the following. One thirteen. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke to the Lord's message to the people, saying, I'm with you, says the Lord. Chapter 2, verse 19, says the following. Is the seed still in the barn? As that the vine, the fig tree, the pomerane, and the olive tree have not yielded fruit. But from this day, I will bless you. Amen. Lord, we praise you in your holy name. Because it's pure that we have uh, enjoyed your presence. We ask you, Lord, that in your word, you may bless your people and your church. We pray. In the name, holy name of Jesus, amen. Everyone may be seated. in the name of the Lord.
Lord and Jesus, hallelujah. So then, hey God, the ambassador of the Lord spoke to the people according to the message saying, I'm with you, says the Lord. Ambassador, I think that everybody knows what it is, right? Ambassador is the one who represents a, a kingdom that represents a nation. And hey guy here, it was a very special ambassador because he was the ambassador of the King of Kings. He was the ambassador of the Lord of Lords. And he came to speak of a land that was not this land, or a kingdom that was not from this kingdom. He was, came to speak about a new heaven, a new earth, and a turn that the Lord has prepared for these people. And the word, the message, for the people of God at that day was the following. <laughs> I am with you. One of the names of the Lord Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us. So we can tonight glorify the Lord because the Lord God is with us. And He is with each one of us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But in those days, the days of Hagar, the name Hagar means celebration and joy. But some of the people did not feel joy. Some of the people was not celebrating. And the Lord then sent His ambassador to speak to Zerubbabel, the prince of Judah, and to speak to Joshua, some son of the high priest, Josedak, son of the high priest, and to speak to the whole people. And the word Zerubbabel, that you are born in Babylon, and it speaks to and it speaks to each one of us. Zerubbabel, he was born in Babylon, but he didn't belong to the Babylon. We are in this world. We were born in this world, but we are not of this world. That's the name of the Lord. And why is that? Because there is a pact. There is a covenant between God and His people, between Jesus and His church. And this pact, this covenant, it cannot be broken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In those days, the word says that the house of the Lord had been destroyed. The altar did no longer exist. And the daily sacrifice was not happening. And because of this, the word of the Lord says that they sowed a lot and they uh, harvested little. They drank, but they not quench their thirst. They dressed up, but they uh, remained cold. And the wage that they received, they received in a bag with a hole at the bottom. And all the things, those things were happening because of the people of the Lord has distanced from God. They had sinned against God. And the word says everyone sinned and destroyed from, um, removed from the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. And it says more. Where abounded sin, superabounded the grace of the Lord. So it was a word of uh, correction for the people. But it was also a word of promise because Hagar was known as a prophet of restoration. And what is to restore is to rebuild, re edify, to make new again. And this is the message of God through the prophet Hagar to his people, to his church. I will turn. I will re-edify the church once again. 
I'll be I'll restore and I'll make it new again. And the Lord comes to his people through the prophet Hagar and asks a question. The author in those days had already been restored. In those days, the temple had already been rebuilt. The sacrifice became a daily sacrifice once again. Because every day we are in the house of the Lord, every day we seek the Lord because we need our sins to be forgiven every day. When we enter here tonight, a sacrifice was offered to God. When we plead for the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Son of God, the Eternal Lamb, has purified us and forgave us of all our sins. And now, here comes the question. Hagar asked a question. Is there a s um, seed on the silo? And we know that the seed has a meaning. The Lord Jesus himself, he speaks of the parable of the seed or the parable of the sower. And the sower went to sow. And the seed fell on different types of ground. But the Bible says that it fell on a good ground. And the good ground produced to 100 and to 60 and to 30. And when we remember of land and we remember the, the land of Israel, when the Lord took the people from Egypt and He says, I'm going to take you to a land, I want the good land and ample. A, uh, land that flows milk and honey and the uh, spies that went there they took a, a cluster of grapes and it was so big that they had to two people had to carry them and it was a good land the heart of the people of God is a good land that's why God God placed seed in the heart of these people because they have a good heart. But the good heart also fails, has its flaws, has its weakness, weaknesses, has its problems, its adversities. And the Lord speak with the prophet. I saw David as according to my heart, but David, the King David, f failed. And when he failed, the prophet went to speak with David. And David said, I sinned. And the prophet came to David and said, You, David, you, if you confess your sin, he is faithful and powerful to forgive us. So God had forgiven David's sin. It was a word of reprehension but also a word of blessing because the people of God every day that walk in the presence of God God took care of everything in every way possible to his people when he needed to speak clearly to his people the people heard the word of the Lord repented of their sins and received the blessing that they needed for that blessing so in those days they were lacking everything they elect many things. But the Lord asked a question. Is there seed in the barn? The commitment of God is with the seed, is with the word. Heaven and earth will pass, my, my, my words are going to remain. I kept your word in my heart so I will not sin against you. So the word. The commitment of God is with his word. We usually say God said and said. 
there's no questioning. If God says, it is said. There's a song, it reminds me of a song. Is there still seed in, in the soil, in the barn? Is the word of the Lord still in yours and in my life? That was a question of the prophet to the Jewish people in those days. Because in those days, because in those days, the vine didn't produce fruit. It produced the grape and wine that is related to the joy of the Holy Spirit, the joy of salvation, because salvation, when I was saved, I felt a great joy. The people didn't have the joy of salvation. They needed the joy of salvation. They were saved because God had chosen them. But there was no joy. This joy of knowing that they were saved, this joy of knowing that they we're going to live in an eternity in heaven, the joy of knowing that our sins have been forgiven because of a price of the blood of Jesus. They lack this gratitude in their hearts. That's jo that joy and this joy can never lack in our lives. Like There's a song that says, this joy will never leave this place. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They lacked joy. The fig tree it speaks of the prophets, speaks of Israel, speaks of the prophecy and of the spiritual gifts. They never, the Lord never spoke to me. And the Lord says that He visits men in dreams d during the night. He speaks once, twice, but sometimes man does not pay attention to this. But the Lord is speaking. So they lacked the fig tree, the prophecy, and the gift, the primary. Permanent speaks of fellowship, the covenant of God with the church. It speaks of the church as the body of Christ. When we break the permanent, it, it is the seeds are all together. It's a, uh, a rosy color, as a reddish color, because it speaks of um, the blood of Jesus that put them put us together in a project of God. But at that time, they, they did have fellowship amongst themselves. But this fellowship cannot lack in the life of our, the church of all days. They also lacked the olive tree. Olive tree produces, produces the olive oil. Anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. So the anointing of this place to heal my wounds, to raise the discouraged. So this is an, the anointing of the, our God, the presence of the Almighty. In Brazil, there's a song. It's um, of my youth. My shoe as a whole, my clothes are ripped, my money is over. I don't have a place to sleep and I can no longer s uh, smile. Shoe speaks of speaks of the walk of the servant. When he walks in the presence of the Lord, he, he the shoe never wears out. When the people of the Lord, when they were walking in the desert, going towards the promised land, there was never a uh, problem with uh, clothing or shoe. So when the shoe has a hole, it's because they stopped walking the project that the Lord had established. The rope speaks of uh, holiness when they leave the project. The whole the sanctity is compromised. The money of this world that was a, a high price was paid. That was paid for your life, for my life, for our lives. Uh, was paid by Jesus Christ in the cross of Calvary. Salvation is free for me, but it cost a high price for God and His Son Jesus. The house is your inhabitants in your eternity. Jesus said, I'm going to the Father to prepare uh, a dwelling. And I will come back. When I come back, when I, I come to get you, you will live with me in the house of, of my Father. Because there are many dwellings there.
shoe, I forgot something, the shoe, the clothing, the money, the house, I can no longer smile. And that's it. It's over. The glory of Israel it was over. Sometimes we are like this, without joy, without peace, without this encouragement and this relief, this fellowship with God, with the church, with the brothers. We are going through trials in many areas of our lives, everywhere. Only problems. But the Lord says that He was with us. This is the great blessing, my brother and sister, to know that outside of, besides my flaws and mistakes, the Lord is with me, the Lord is with you, the Lord is with each one of us. And it says the following. Is the seed still in the barn? The word of the Lord is it present, still present in our lives, and can we affirm with assurance that the word of the Lord is in our midst? Blessed be the name of the Lord, because Hagar, the ambassador of the Lord, the Holy Spirit of God, has spoken tonight to each one of us, and the Lord has determined a day to bless His people. There are blessings, there are prophecies that the Lord had determined four times. A few are fulfilled within nine months, some within 14 years, which was the, the wedding of Jacob with the woman that he loved. 25 years for the birth of a child, 2,000 years, 3,000 years for the fulfillment of a prophecy. But the Lord has said that because of the seed that was still in the barn, because of the word that was still uh, kept uh, outside, besides all the adversities in the heart of the peop His people, the Lord is saying, from this day forward, I will bless you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord didn't say the night. He, because the Bible says that night is a moment of adversity. Night is a problem. The Lord didn't say the, pro, uh, the night because the Bible says that the crying may last a night. The problem may last an entire night. But the joy will come in the morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Hagar was a prophet of joy. He was a prophet of, of celebration, festivity. The word of Hagar was a word to bring joy to the heart of the Jewish people. It was a word of blessing and a, a reconnection, restoration. And tonight, my brother and sister, the Lord, you brought to the house of the Lord because God wants to operate, act, and manifest His power, His joy, His mercy upon your life, and upon your heart, upon your house. The Lord wants to restore. The Lord wants to restore. He wants to re-edify. He wants to give back to you what you had lost. That's why you came up to the house of uh, the Lord tonight, you, and you're here glorifying the name of the Lord. That's why it serves a glorification to the Lord. Is because the Lord has provided all the things that we need for our lives. But uh, from that day forward, from today onwards, from this moment onwards, if you hear my voice, don't harden your heart, says the Lord. Today is the day in which the Lord has determined to bless you. Today is the day in which the Lord has determined to restore your life to your home, your house. It is today, it's now, it's in the present moment. Because this is the moment in which the Lord has prepared a people that are going to depart to eternity. This is the moment of the near. Do not, the moment in the Lord Jesus is coming to His church. This is the moment the Lord has determined a blessing for your life. And it says the following. And from that day I will bless you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
And this is the word of the Lord. And from this day forward, from this moment onwards, the Lord has determined a blessing for your life, for your home, for your house. The Lord has shown a man that came to the church tonight and he saw the temple. Oh, he saw the time. And he noticed that the, the clock was going too fast and doing the word. He saw that the time was going even faster. He didn't know what was going on. And the Lord was telling to this man, we are in the time of the near. We are close to the coming of the Lord Jesus. It's the time for us to re-edify re our, our spiritual life, our spiritual house. It's the time the Lord has determined to bless your life, my brother and sister. The Lord also has shown a woman and her concern with uh, is with one of our family members who is in attached to the things of this world. He is attached to the world. And she had pleaded for the Lord a blessing, a solution, because she thinks that there is no solution. But the Lord is telling tonight that to the sister that he gave a word for this woman. And the word uh, she should bring this word to her house. The word is that the Lord is going to deliver your family member. The Lord will restore your house and your family. And the Lord will he will act in your behalf and into your, on your benefit. This word was like a, a rose. When it was given, she was given this rose to this family member. The good smell of the Christ would uh, spread in, into her house. And the Lord has shown a couple that's also going through uh, some adversities. And I think that the solution is to, to split up. But the word of the Lord is for this couple, for this family that will remain together and after this trial you will be victorious this is the word of the Lord as a message of the Holy Spirit for your life for my life for our lives amen
to Jesus. Glory to God. I invite the church to stand up. We're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord. Lord, if we're not you, Lord, what would be of us, Lord? We praise you for your infinite mercy, worth it joy upon your people. We praise the Lord for another night in which we are in your presence. We praise the Lord for everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God.
Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord Father, we want this moment praise your holy name. Because we know, Lord, that you are present in this place. We want to praise you for everything they have done in the service, for the deliverances, for the operation of your, of your Holy Spirit, because of the life that have been transformed, because the mind that have been purified, and because your name was glorified. Receive, Lord, our adoration, the expression of our love, of our gratitude for having a God like you. Receive, Lord, at this hour, our praise, the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. And we name you say the wonderful joy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of this Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. We're coming uh, to the end of our service. The gifts, the word was given. What the Lord has shown to the service tonight. The, they are the spiritual gifts and the desire of the Lord. The demonstration of what the Lord feels for you. He's concerned for your life. They were delivered. Now you need to place everything in order in your life. Put it in practice so that you may be may have victories in the presence of the Lord. Right? To this couple. Separation, divorce is never the uh, the right, the best option. As for prayer, and for sure the Lord will operate a miracle in your life. Where there is the presence of the Lord Jesus, everything goes well. But we need to desire. Open up your heart, forgive, and accept the Lord. Amen. And I uh, say the peace of the Lord to everyone. If you need a prayer, we are at the disposal. Uh, the deacons, the workers, you just raise your hand and we are going to wherever you are. Thank you. 